Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to scale Elementor widgets on Hover without any additional plugins or CSS code. Elementor just came out with version 3.5, which introduced this right here called CSS Transform. You can read more about it here on their website. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on how to use the scale transform on Hover for three different widgets. On the first example, I'm going to show you how to easily have it where the user can hover over an image and it just scales up a little bit. I'm going to show you how you can also do this for a button. So this right here is a button. So you hover over it and it will slowly scale up. And then down here in the last example, I'm going to show you how you can scale down an image really slow on hover. So you can see in this example, it looks like the phone's kind of scaling backwards. So I'm going to show you how to easily do this using that new CSS transform setting. Here we are on the back end of the Elementor website, and like I said, you will need the latest version as of recording this is version 3.5. This is introduced into the free version of Elementor, so you do not need Elementor Pro or anything along those lines to pull this off. The way you access the new CSS transform settings is on any widget, you can go ahead into the advanced settings. So in this example, we just have an image. Under advanced, you're going to see this new tab right here called transform. And as you can see right here, there's two different settings. There's one for normal, which is just the front end of the website. So you can see if I scale this up, it will automatically scale the image up or down. But what we want to focus on is this right here. So you want to have an effect on hover. So let's go ahead and do that. So once you click hover, this is where you can go ahead under scale now. And you're going to want to keep this button on right here, keep proportions. This will keep it where it scales up automatically. And the way it works is every image should start at one. So one is hundred percent. So if I go anything below one, so if I go to like 0.5, it's going to shrink it half of the original size. So let's go ahead and scale it up a little bit. So maybe like 1.2 and you can see right here, that's a bit much. You, you, when you have an effect like this, you don't want to have it go over the sections because you could start running into overlay issues. So let's go ahead and do like 1.05, something very subtle. And that looks okay. Maybe we can go to like 1.09. So that almost fills up the container. So that might work well for this. And so you can just keep that right there at 1.09. And if you look down here, they have a setting for the transition duration. So this is how long will the effect take to get to where you want to go. So you can go ahead and increase this a little bit and this goes by milliseconds. So let's go to something like a thousand. So that's going to take 1000 milliseconds. You can see right here when you hover over, it's a slow, subtle effect. Because if you keep this off, it's going to look a little more jumpy. You can see right here, it's pretty fast. So if you went ahead and added, you know, a thousand, that's a pretty good number to start with. So there you go. There's already effect number one. So the user can hover over this and then it will slowly fade up. And like I said, you can go ahead and just keep this setting on right here. If for some reason you want to scale it in a funky little way like this, you can do that. But I don't really know a lot of use cases where this could be useful, where you scale on the Y and the X axis separately, especially for images. This probably is never going to be a very good use case. So let's go ahead, just turn that on. And what's nice about the setting is they give you the option to turn it on or off depending on you know, what mobile device or tablet you're on. So if you just go ahead and just put this back at one, this will change where it's not going to scale at all. So you can go ahead and just always go on mobile if you never want it to scale up and just keep that at one. Now let's go ahead to this button and I'm going to show you how you can do the very same effect on a button instead of an image. So same thing, you just go under the advanced transform, click under hover and same thing. You just click on scale, keep that on. And you can see by default, if I just kind of keep it at 1.2, that's not bad. So you can even scale it up maybe 1.3, you know, whatever's going to fit your screen size and not have it, you know, scale outside the widget or the section or anything like that. You want to keep it where it's pretty much within the container. Now you're going to see in this case right here, you see how the button, if I hover over this corner over here, it's still making this go up. This is because by default, when you use a widget like a button, it's going to fill up the whole width of the container right here. So I'm going to show you how you can easily change that. So if you go under here and instead of transform, you can go under positioning and this is uh, built into Elementor as well. 
So by default, it fills up the whole width of that container. What you're gonna wanna do is click this button right here, which says inline auto, and you're gonna see it's only going to take up the width that it should. And so we can go ahead in here and let's make that a little bit smaller for the transform. It's kinda hanging over the edge. So maybe like a 1.2. And that looks good right there. So let's keep that at 1.2. Now, when you do the inline, what it does is it always pushes everything as far as it can to the left and the width of the widget that it should be instead of going all the way. And so if you want this centered, what you can do is go under the column settings right here and you see where it says horizontal align instead of default, just change that to center. So what this does is it automatically is going to center any inline widgets within this uh, column. So if you need to learn more about this, you can click this button right here and it will show you a little more information on how the positionings work and all of those things. So this is a different tutorial that I can make in the future, but you just know that if you need it to center, you can always just go ahead into the column center after you do the inline positioning. So hopefully that makes sense. And same thing, we can go under the transform again and on hover, we can have it scale out at that 1.2. Let's make it where it goes really slow. So if we change this to like, let's do 3000. Let's go really slow. It's a very kind of subtle way to have it where if the user, you know, has their mouse go over this, they kind of know it's an interactive button. They might just think it's text, but if they move their mouse over, they're going to see some movement. So that's going to kind of draw their attention to it. So let's go ahead, hit update, and let's see how these two effects look on the front end. Here we are on the front end of the website, and you can see that this scales down perfectly and nice and slow at 3,000 milliseconds. And they will kind of slowly fade back. And then if the user moves their mouse outside the area, it will kind of go like a pulsating, like on and off. So it's nice that it doesn't just jump. And let's go ahead on mobile and make sure that this image doesn't scale. So you can see that when we put that to one, it's not doing a scaling animation. This will scale because we didn't turn that to a one on mobile. Now I'm gonna show you how you can scale this down so it looks like it's kind of fading into the website. And to pull that off, it's very easy. You just go back into transform, hover, scale. And instead of having anything above one, we can go down to something smaller, like let's do 0.6. That's too small. So let's go ahead and do like 0.85. Let's see if that looks good. So that looks okay. And same thing down here. Let's have it where the transition is nice and slow at like 4,000. So that might be a little too slow. Let's go to like a 3,000, kind of like what we did for the button. And yeah, that looks good right there. And this right here is a transparent PNG with a little bit of a shadow uh, on the bottom, if you can see that right here. So that makes the effect look even more realistic because it looks like the shadow's kind of traveling with the image. And it is because it's part of the PNG image. So that's a pretty cool little effect. Let's hit update and let's see how it looks on the front end. And you can see right here, that little shadow makes it look like it's going backwards as well. So that's a nice effect. So this scaling can be really useful if you have PNGs with shadows. It's kind of like a cool little effect. And what's good about the fact that they added this in here, you don't have to touch any CSS code or anything like that because you could always pull this off with CSS, but it's nice that they just have this built in now. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.